Hello everybody, my name is Steven M, and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. This episode, we will be focusing on going to Minmus to collect some scientific data to further our space program so we can get out to other planets. I know, this sounds pretty incredible, and I am pretty uh, excited myself. I'm, I'm really sorry that last time, we didn't get to go to Minmus, and instead, I tested out a whole plane load of planes... Just so I could, uh, you know, have, have a little bit of fun, uh, get my Kerbals maybe a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little bit too hot, if you know what I mean. They might have gone a little bit boomy boom, uh, in, in the meantime. But we do have 358 science to spend. So let's, uh, let's look at what we can get with that science. We could get some, like, heavier rocketry. We could, uh, get some fuel systems, advanced construction, supersonic flight. Ooh, yes, like, we want to go back into planes. Specialized control, which would give us three people per command pod, and also give us the lander can, which is probably the most useful of anything. Uh, precision engineering, which gives us a whole bunch of small fuel cells. Advanced electronics, which gives us big solar panels and energy things. Uh, advanced exploration, which gives us ladders and a barometer. And then advanced landing, which gives us really big landing struts and really big parachutes. So, what are we going to spend our 358 science on? Because we can buy any two of these things. Um, huh. It's actually, it's actually quite a difficult decision, because I, I want to only spend what's most important, and sometimes I run into issues thinking. Well, the lander can uh, does look very, very useful. Uh, so does this stuff, though, too. And this also... If I was going to get this, then I... Might also want to get advanced construction as well because it gives me adapters. Because adapters will be quite important. But we're just going to Minmus, so I think we should be able to go with a uh, with a simple three tier design like uh, like we have been doing, and I could uh, fancy off of that direction. So let's get specialized control just because it gives us the, uh, the lander can, and we really want the lander can. It actually that opens up some uh, more opportunities for high altitude flight and large control. Uh, but I don't think that's what we're going to need for the second. The barometer would probably be very, uh, very useful, but the ladders are also quite useful. But we're going to Minmus, so we probably won't need that at all. And, ooh, what else do we, what else do we get? We could get both of these for 180 science, or we could get one more of these. Uh, we'll, we'll go with heavier rocketry, because then we, we do get these, uh, LFB KR 1x2s, which are actually some pretty good solid boosters, I'm pretty sure. So, um, let's research that. And that kind of gets us off to nuclear, uh, there, which we're gonna have to develop some more of this stuff to even able to get that. And very heavy rocketry, which will unlock the, basically, super engines of the game. These things are insanely powerful. Uh, 25 times 4 engine cluster. This thing has a thrust of 3,200. 3,200 thrust. That is insane compared to uh, the mainsail, which only gives you 1,500. And then even less compared to the skipper, which is only 650. So, yes, let's use the uh, the newly researched stuff to build ourselves a Minmus capable craft. Okay, let's go into the vehicle assembly building. The building where we assemble vehicles. Ah, the Mark 1 lander can is now available. I think we will actually start using this thing because it is quite useful. It's quite ergonomic. Uh, it can go in a whole bunch of different directions. You can put a whole bunch of stuff on it. It's got flat surfaces, which, are re which is really nice. And I don't know, it just looks pretty awesome. Uh, let's get our mystery goo uh, things on here. Two as standard. We usually only put two on. We also get ourselves a science junior. Yes, because who does not want a science junior? <laughs> okay, uh... Whew, what do we do for power? As far as power goes, I think we can kind of sneak something on the side under here. Uh, yep, and so that'll give us 200 electric charge. That should be okay, I guess. And let's put on probably four solar panels. Four solar panels looks pretty good. And they don't cost that much, so you don't have to be too, uh, too kind of liberal with them. Uh... Let's find SAS. So we unlocked SAS. We have gotten our, ourselves some reaction wheels. So uh, let's get ourselves. These things are actually really insanely small now. So I think we can actually fit it within the uh, thing itself. Hmm, that might be interesting. Uh, can I put anything on top of it still, though? Uh, if I wanted to put... It kind of gets a bit funky, and it puts itself inside the craft. Uh, don't know exactly what's going on there. Uh, but we're probably not going to put that much stuff on top 
uh, of the craft anyway, just because of obvious reasons. Uh, actually, this parachute probably would be what we put on top. Uh, let's see if I can pull this out. Holy crap. Uh, I may have accidentally put this in and then unknowingly never been able to get it out. Uh, that could be that could be one of my largest flaws. Um, we'll just put this parachute on top and we will hope to dear life that it works when we need it to. I will also attach some radial mount parachutes just in case everything goes uh, not to plan. I'll stick two on in some method that no one will notice secretly. Like that. Yes, best place for parachutes ever. Okay, um, <laughs> let's get ourselves a decoupler on this since this is going to be the main landing uh, kind of module unit thing. Uh, kind of one of these, I think. Uh, we're going to need to take off. So I think I'm going to do that, and then we're going to also have kind of a system. A system. A system. It's sort of like I'm, I'm trying to trying to bring up like a system of equations to, to solve something, you know, and like statistics. It, yeah, complicated stuff. Don't, don't listen to me. I, can, I sometimes actually bore myself to death thinking about things like infinity, which really I shouldn't be thinking about because... A little bit overcomplicated um, for for right now. Uh, okay, so this is going to be kind of like the main uh, kind of drop stage, and it should uh, get us onto the ground of the Minmus, which actually should not be that hard. So it is very light. It's very small. It's almost like a kind of like a comet thing, but it's it's not a comet because that would be very harmful for Kerbin. Uh, let's get ourselves for landing gear. Those landing gear should work just fine. We can actually. Um, Extend them out. Yep, and they were great. Uh, I actually think gerbils can gerbils. Well, <laughs> apparently gerbils have not become gerbils. Uh, gerbils have not become gerbils. They have not. Uh, the ger <laughs> the gerbils can actually probably just jump up here because it is Minmus, and their RCS pack should probably really help them out. Uh, if anything, they can jump from here to here, and if, if something really bad happens, I I don't know. It if I can't get a gerbil back on there, I, I guess I've lost all hope in myself. Let's just put it that way. Uh, let's get ourselves some lights on here, just so we know when we are about to reach the surface. And I think that's doing about good. I think there's actually a couple more science. Yeah, temperature module, which we can attach. Uh, we might need one of them, though. So we can attach a temperature module there, and I think that's all of our science-y stuff that we can do for uh, for now. So uh, let's put a decoupler on here. Actually, I forgot to decouple this whole module here because I mean, we probably don't want to land with the main engine system. That would be a little bit overly complicated. We can just ditch that. It's not worth that much anyway. By the time we get back, we'll probably have, like, no fuel left in it at all. So, yep, that's like that. Uh, let's actually put some uh, nose cones on the top of these things. Uh, yep. There's an SAS module in here. Uh, yeah. Actually, what we could do is we could... Well, actually, no, we can't remove that small module. That's right, because it's, it's stuck in there. Okay, um... So, adapter, I think we want an adapter now, and adapter time, is it adapter time? Where's my adapters at? They would be under structural, structural, adapters are always under structural, there we go. Now we're gonna need one of these, not like a whole bunch of them within each other, and let's put uh, some decently large sized things in them. Eh. See, yeah, we want some good engines. Are these the ones, which are the ones with the gimbling on them? Uh, what does it say? Uh, vectoring. Yes. Okay, these are the ones that have vectoring. These don't. So we want the 45s. 45s will get us where we need to go. The 45s. Inspiring Kerbals. Forever. Endeavor. 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 Endeavor? I'm talking about other spacecraft. Real life spacecraft. Uh, this is actually starting to look like a very large craft. 36,000. It's becoming quite expensive. I really hope it, it will work for us in the end. Uh, so basically, I think this is just going to be an identical stage here, but there's going to be a whole lot of things outside of it. We could maybe add like another like half fuel tank to the bottom of it or something, like one of these babies, just to make it last a little bit longer. And let's get some decouplers on here so we can begin to build our uh, our staging device. Yes, if we add another couple of these things and we move them down because that's a little bit high up for what we're trying to do. Okay, right there, and we get ourselves some 45s. Uh, I'm just using 45s in this situation because I like the 45. Now, this actually looks like a very realistic rocket. Um, it's kind of interesting going on, but it should be okay. It's fine to me. 
Yeah, let's make these the same length as the other ones, and then let us also uh, put on a decoupler, another decoupler, with some... Oh, I could have used these boosters. These boosters look expensive. Yeah, well, it like doubles the price of the spacecraft. Actually, maybe I, I could just use these things, you know? And then I could have uh, the rest of the thing boost us the rest of the way. I don't know, it seems a little bit excessive if I really think about it. I mean, those things are massive. Those things have way too much fuel in them uh, compared to what we're actually launching here. Eh, well, maybe it would be a good insight into what we're doing. You know, maybe if I got rid of these and I just stuck on three of these things, we'd have... Maybe, maybe it would work better. Maybe we'd have more fuel left, you know? It could get us farther. Eh, that looks kind of unrealistic, but it's not the first time I've built unrealistic looking things. You know, uh, it happens to me every once in a while. And we only have these really small nose cones. Uh, it's actually quite unfortunate. Uh, we could stick on some stabilizers on top just to, uh, you know, jump the price up. How much does that actually? 3,000? These are like 1,000 each. Yeah, uh, but that will help us keep in control of the craft. I think that should actually realistically work. That looks insanely powerful as a bottom stage. And this will have to launch much before that because there's way less fuel in it. Um, so yeah, basically these three will launch and then they will decouple and then, well, I don't know about that. Maybe we should start these engines up before those decouple. Yeah, like this, like so. Because yeah. this will be quite hard to move, actually, now that I think about it, uh, once that happens. So we want to be almost done with this stage by the time uh, we get rid of these. So yeah, those fire, those fire, those will decouple, these three fire or deep couple those fire and then that decouples to get rid of that and then the four engines fire on the side and then that one is not supposed to fire there because that will literally make me a potato and yeah uh now we just gonna need a whole bunch of structural uh struts on it so it does not fall apart because i already see this thing exploding on the launch pad in a horrific explosion if we don't do something about it uh so let's attach everything properly actually we can just attach it from there since it doesn't have any nose cone or anything. Uh, these ones will be need to stuck together. Okay. And these will too. We just don't want anything coming apart on us. Because that would be bad. Very bad. Um, and let's attach together these engines so when we land, or if we just speed up really fast, they won't explode on us. More worried about everything exploding, I guess. And... Mm, let's make sure that these are attached to here. Okay, and that looks pretty secure. And then let's also... These things don't cost that much, do they? No, they're $42. These things are like the cheapest of anything I've ever built. Uh, Let's attach this to here. Actually, no, we can't attach them there. Crap, I just put down a random thing. And, yeah, right through there. Okay, actually, that was not... There is no symmetry. Okay. Symmetry, please help me. Symmetry. Oh, that's right. <laughs> not gonna work, because there's four on there, and there's only three. So, uh, let's figure out something to do with the engines. Uh, actually, this should have been four. That should have been four. Can't, it's only three. Uh, maybe we can't actually connect these together because of the very interesting situation we've been put in. So, we're just going to hope that this does not fall off. That sounds like a really bad plan. Uh, a really, really bad plan. Um, so, let's just, let's just put on one here. And then another one here. This is going to be really unbalanced, but it's what we're going to have to do. And then another one here. You know, just so uh, nothing bad happens. And another one right here. Okay, so look, we have everything all settled out. Um, this should be kind of glued together. I don't think anything should explode as long as we put these uh, stability enhancers on this launch platform. Uh, let's get these things. You can never have too many of them, uh, because without them, everything explodes. They're kind of like the whole glue of the operation. So, yes, that is sort of looking like, uh, our, uh, our basic, uh, launch stage thing. We could probably put another thing here. I don't know, I don't want those things ripping off on me. Uh, right there. This should be actually pretty good right there. All right, nope, something is not matching up. There. Okay, uh, no, they're actually literally inside the fuel tank. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe that was not my best thought idea. So, uh, yeah, this is gonna have to hold up on its own. So, yes, I think we have a working 
or supposedly working craft that we can send out to Minmus. Okay, yep, it's right there, I'll to the ground. And let's make sure all of this stuff is within the right staging now as well. Uh, I really hope this will have enough thrust to lift the whole thing off the ground, because if not, we are essentially screwed and we're going to be almost $100,000 out of cash. And that will be very unfortunate. Uh, I believe that's all that I have. So, let's give this the name. We're going to name it the, uh, the Minmus, the Minmus Super Launcher. Yes, very original with my, ah! <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, good thing we have Control Z. That was Control X. Control Z. Okay, there we go. Everything's back into place. Okay, uh, let's save it. Let's not launch it yet. Let's go back out to the uh, Space Hunter and we'll look at some of the uh, missions that we can accomplish uh, just so we don't leave before accomplishing what we need to do. Uh, explore Ike, Duna. Plant flag on the moon. Um, we've already actually done that. Darn. How come I forgot to accept that one? Apparently we need to go back to the moon at some point and accept that just so we can get a lot of money. Actually, this this could be cost effective. Just saying. It could be very cost effective. Uh, this will be very good. It'll give us 131000 and It'll actually pay for the trip back if we can complete this. Uh, because it will give quite a bit. Uh, it gives a 30000 advance as well, which we've already taken. So yeah, um... That's apparently going to be everything, because uh, there doesn't appear to be anything else that we can do. Suborbital trajectory over Kerbin. Uh, eh. Oh, this looks like a good way to get money. We're going to have to test out some of these uh, after after we get back from our Minmus mission, because a lot of these could be very useful for what we're trying to uh, accomplish here. So uh, let's just close out, because there actually was nothing we could accept. And let's go back to the center, though we don't actually need to because we could select a pilot from there. And we will select ourselves a pilot. Of course, they are all gone, out doing something, I guess. Where are all of our people at? Where are they at? Someone tell me where Tompley went. I don't think I killed Tompley. Tompley's alive, right? Tompley is alive. Right? Where's Tompley? 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 Tompley, where did you go? Did he die? No. He's on EVA. Tompley, where are you? What are you doing? Oh, that's right. He's out. He's way out there. Oh, we haven't flown him back yet. Uh, I guess I'm going to fly him back at some point. Uh, let's just hire another person in his place. I actually think I was just eating in this menu and then I did that. Oh, let's find someone else to send on the mission. Uh, someone good. Uh, this person looks pretty good. Barfred. Barfred Carmen. Okay. He is now available for our missions. Okay, he's gonna have so much fun. We can go here, we can load up the Minmus Super Launcher, and Barford Kerman will be flying the Minmus Super Launcher to Minmus. Oh yeah, I'm getting so excited right now. Okay, let's take it out to the launch pad. This explodes. It's gonna be very bad. It's gonna be very expensive as well. Like, really ridiculously expensive. Okay, everything's looking good. Nothing exploded. It's a very good sign. Uh, let's uh, get on our SAS. We'll throttle up to max. Let's hope that it does not literally blow the engines off the side and then blow everything else to pieces. Because that would also be extremely unfortunate. And it looks like we are ready for launch. Yeah, I, th I think we're ready. Um, this is kind of scary. Knowing that this is literally $100,000 that I cannot get back if this does not work out right. Um, okay, in three... Two, one, launching. Okay, everything's going well. Okay, throttle down. That was a bit intense. Uh, we're getting like two Gs of acceleration now. Uh, we don't want to burn up in the lower atmosphere or kind of waste our fuel in the lower atmosphere. Uh, this is quite nice, actually. This is a very good acceleration. I think this is definitely worth the uh, the fifty thousand dollars we paid for these three engines uh, because they're going to take us quite high through the atmosphere. I will admit. And they're quite controllable. And they're a liquid field. They're not solid. If they were solid, that would be awful. Because I'd have, like, no control over them at all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wow, we're almost going 200 meters per second uh, within the lower atmosphere. It's uh, quite nice. We're going up at a good speed. Over a G of acceleration. And 
almost getting up near the mythical 10 kilometers, and these things are running down very low on fuel. Uh, I think we can now actually activate our secondary stage engines and get those prepared, and now we can uh, turn ourselves to the side and begin our uh, gravity turn. Yes, gravity turns. Not very realistic, because in real life you kind of start your gravity turns immediately. Uh, ooh, I just noticed a big problem we might have. Uh, getting rid of these engines might be more difficult than I thought. Okay, uh, they didn't explode, so that's a good sign. Though we are really kind of lopsided in our orbit. We're going way too vertical. Okay, uh, max throttle, please. Max throttle. Whew. Okay, this is kind of scary, actually. These things are not burning through fuel nearly as uh, efficiently, efficiently, nearly as scarily as the other ones were, which is to be fair, I guess. Uh, okay. And we are getting ourselves into an orbit. Yes, yes, we are indeed. Let's just hope that this is a, uh, a functioning orbit. One that will be good for us. Okay. Uh, come on. Come on. This craft is uh, getting considerably lighter as uh, the uh, day goes on. Yep, we're now approaching 45 tons. And we're going to ditch these fuel tanks pretty soon. Uh, yep, the lower ones, 67. are still not out uh, into space yet, but we are gaining a lot of horizontal velocity around the planet. So this would be a very good suborbital mission at best. Okay, we're starting to get a bit stronger. Our acceleration's really starting to increase now. Really picking up. And let's see. Uh, we are now officially going to be in space, at least at some point. So it's a good thing. And let's decouple that previous stage and activate the engines. Okay. And now we are on a much lighter stage. We are down to only 33 tons, so uh, we should be much more efficient in our uh, voyage around the, the planet. Come on. I just hope we don't run out of fuel and that we'll have enough to fully complete the mission because these are not the most uh, effective of things to use to get into uh, an orbit or to get to the moon. And there is no uh, docking ports aboard this thing. We actually haven't even discovered docking yet, so... If we run out of fuel, we literally just have to deorbit and then try again and just be sad that we lost all of that money. Uh, but we did it for science. For scientific advancement. Okay, that is actually a really good uh, orbit, I, I think. I think that was a very well put orbit. Not, no, not even an orbit, but suborbit. Attempt to get into orbit. Pre-stage planning to get to orbit, I guess. Yep, okay. Uh, should take us 17 seconds? I think we'll have 17 seconds worth of fuel in here. Uh, is enough to get to the moon? Or Midmus? I don't know about that. Don't know. This is probably going to be separated into two missions like we did with the moon. Uh, because that was interesting enough. There was a whole lot of stuff that went into that moonar mission. That it was actually quite fun. Um, yes, but then we brought Jebediah back and then he exploded. So, yeah, that's probably not going to happen again. We don't want, uh, Barfred to explode. Exploding Barfords does not work well for the uh, Kerbal Space Astronomy Science Lab, Dodge the Government Area. But this looks like an orbit. We indeed did have enough fuel to uh, get into a stable circular orbit, and we should have some left over in our upper stage. Some, being the key word there, to get us to Minmus. I'm not sure if it's enough, but it is some. Uh, now we just have to figure out how the heck we are going to get an encounter with Minmus, because it is, like, really difficult to get an encounter with Minmus uh, that is successful. Uh, generally, you'll either impact the moon attempting to do it, or you will uh, hit an asteroid, I guess. It's an unknown object there, which is looking very suspicious. But we'll have to get into those unknown objects uh, later, because uh, we technically don't have the means right now to get out and explore them. Uh, I don't think we ever will, really. You know, Very interesting. I just hope they don't hit us. Uh, so yes, let's find a place where we are, what just happened there, apparently we just went from being in orbit to then being out in the middle of space, not sure, okay, uh, we need to move this around the planet until we are kind of lined up at a correct inclination to minimus, so let's set this as a target, and let us, oh, you can control this by, by scrolling, I did not know that, which is actually throwing us off, okay. Uh, about tomorrow at this time would apparently be the best time, uh, the time we would be inclinated with Minmus. But I have no idea how far ahead or behind the moon we will be 
actually not that far. Um, there's just a little bit we need to do in terms of correcting our uh, our launch and our trajectory. Uh, this could work potentially. Uh, what was that? That looks like an encounter with something. Uh, let's kind of give it a little bit more delta v. No, nope, we're now leaving the planet if we do that. Uh, what was that? And that's leaving. And I somehow think there's a very thin line between leaving. Actually. That is a legitimate encounter with the moon we would be experiencing as well along the way. And... Uh, Minimus encounter. Uh, key thing to note here is that we encounter Minmus, and then we disappear. Um, yes, only slightly scary, I guess. Uh, let's see if changing our kind of way we come around will do anything to fix this problem. Uh, so we do know that Minmus will be somewhere around here at some point, as long as we do not hit the moon along the way. Because um, this is really extremely dependent on the moon being in different places. Uh, holy crap. Jeez. Uh, Game, you're really throwing me for a loop here. Game, what are you doing? So now it's saying it's going to be a completely different place. This is making very little sense to me. Uh, eh, do we need more? Do we need more? Do we need less? Do we need less? Do we need to push ourselves in a certain direction to get ourselves more acquainted? Put ourselves further or back? Tell me, Minmus, tell me. Okay, well, it appears the best we can do is to... Oh, actually, no, that, that is a Minmus encounter. So, that is apparently our Minmus encounter. A 37-second burn around the planet in 29 minutes. Uh, that should take us eight days to get to. Um, okay, then. Should be plausible. Uh, let's just hope we don't hit Minmus, because it's really kind of sketchy about where we're going to show up. Uh, I have a feeling that moving our craft right now is actually changing where we're going to show up at. Uh, but that should be fine, so let's uh, go around the planet until we can get to our burning. Yes. That's going to be fun and exciting, don't you think? I think so. Ooh, the dark side of Kerbin. The dark side of Kerbin. Oh, it's scary. It is quite scary. Kerbin can be quite scary at times, and, and Barfred is probably really scared that he's going to be the first Kerbal to show up at this really bizarre planet. Actually, moon, not planet. Show up at this really bizarre looking moon that's just blue, and you always want to eat when you're a kid, or a Kerbal kid. I'm not sure what you call that, a, a Kerbid. Kerbid? Well, wow, that's a very interesting name. Yeah, um, but he's living his dream, you know? There's, the whole world is literally watching him. This entirely green, uh, unpopulated Kerbal world, which I guess must have been hit by a meteor at some point, which killed everybody until one family of super Kerbals formed and decided that they would start a space program because there was no one there to stop them. I guess that pretty much sums up Kerbal Space Program as well. Uh, so yes, we are doing our burnout. I think we are going to run out of fuel in this stage. And chances are yes, yes we are. Okay, so now we're starting this one and now it's going to take us 43 seconds to do the burn. And I really hope we have enough fuel in these engines considering these also have to slow us down and land us on the planet. Uh, we only need 400 meters per second more. So it's uh, looking pretty sketchy right now. Um, come on. Come on. We can do this. I know we can do this. We also have to go through a Mooner encounter as well. That's kind of scary. Um, okay. Okay. We're almost there. We are almost there. It's only like 100 meters per second more. Only like 100 meters per second more. And now Mooner encounter and... We have to fly past the Mooner Encounter, ooh, ooh, okay, which is going to send us out to Minmus. Yes. Okay, we are going to get near Minmus. Okay, it is confirmed by the red lines of doom that we will at least get somewhere near Minmus. Ooh, I'm really kind of confusing the game. Uh, yeah, I do that. I generally tend to do that. Uh, Barfred looking really scared. Uh, he probably should be, actually. Have they made an IVA view for the lander cannon? They have! Oh, well, they probably have for a long time. I think I've used this before. Ah, uh, yes, but he is so scared in here. Uh, so let's go out to the moon. We have two encounters to perform. One around the moon, uh, where we are going to get quite close. Not too close, just 
Actually, we're not going to get that close. We're going to be, like, pretty far away, but... I mean, not like the first time where we, we actually almost, like, hit it. Because uh, that was dangerously close. Um, but yes, I don't actually think we're going to be able to do any scientific observations while we're flying around the moon just because, you know, it's not actually our goal to get here. Uh, this isn't where we wanted to go uh, to begin with. Yep, so we are in approach with the moon, and apparently our approach with uh, Minmus is now sketchy at best and is now flashing repeatedly. Um... Well, that's, uh, yeah, but there's a flag on the moon, so, yes, good thing. Jelly good, Barfred, you can look out at the moon, uh, be one of those Kerbals to take an IVA look at it, uh, be one of the first Kerbals to do so, uh, if you can figure out where it is, actually. There's the sun, uh, probably not what you want to be looking at in a spacecraft, and you have no idea where it is, uh, which completely figures, considering, wait, what was that? There's Kerbin, okay, uh, which way is your window facing? Oh, yeah, that's right, we need to spin... This way! This way? Yes! There he is! He's looking at the moon right there. He has it in his sights. Um, but he's not going there. It's not where he's going. They are going somewhere else, and they're going to fly by the moon. So, yes. Uh, let's look at our map uh, just to see where we're going. And, okay, we are sort of back into an encounter with Minmus. Uh, we might be able to make a course correction coming up. Uh, in an attempt to kind of fix what we've done. Not really fix what we've done, but uh, we haven't really broken anything. It's just that the uh, orbit we're going to get around uh, Minmus is going to be really ridiculously strange if we don't decide to do anything about it. Because uh, we can get much closer to it if we wanted to. Uh, we could actually hit it if we really insisted on it. Uh, but again, hitting it is not actually what we're trying to do here. Or suicide burn is also not what we're trying to do. And this maneuver note is being mean to me. I don't like it when maneuver nodes are mean to me. Where's my feelings? Okay, uh, how close does that one get? That actually does not get that close. I thought that would be much closer than that. Uh, mm, mm, am I on the far side of it though? Yeah, I kind of am. Uh, whew, okay, let's push it in a little bit and. Let's just kind of look at what we can do if we get it there. Um, yeah, it's either we're going to be like a million away from it or we can get like 200,000 away. So I guess it would be something we can do. It's only three meters per second, uh, which is actually quite amazing. Mm, let's perform it right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, and we have now performed a burn, which will get us in better alignment with Minmus. Yes, it'll get us about 370,000 meters away instead of really ridiculously far away. Um, and we still have a decent amount of fuel left, so let's uh, get ourselves in alignment with Minmus. I have a very bad tendency of flying myself way too far around, so I will just quick save now. And I will actually go back if I overshoot, because that is really more user stupid error that the game can't stop when it changes than my own fault. Uh, yep, and okay, okay, everything's coming together. Where is Minmus? Minmus is now like flying way close to where we are because we're gonna be moving really ridiculously slow. Um, okay, Minmus should be visible to the naked eye. Uh, Minmus, Minmus, that's the moon. There's Minmus, Minmus, yes, you're seen. You are indeed, indeed seen, Minmus. Okay, let's add a maneuver node. And let's cancel out our velocity until we are in orbit around Minmus. Okay, and that's apparently only going to be about 180 meters per second. So it's going to be a 13-second burn. It should be really simple to perform. And we'll be captured around the moon. And then we will end the episode. Okay, so let's get ourselves. It's apparently two hours. we got to wait <clears throat> two hours more. Okay, you can do it, Barfred. And 54, 30 minutes. 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, and burn, burn away. Okay. Getting pretty close. This is gonna happen. It's for realsies. We are almost in orbit around Minmus. And we have done it. Okay, we are in orbit around Minmus. Oh, yeah. We are actually now the furthest away from Kerbin any Kerbal has ever been before. Yes, it is actually really exciting uh, for Barfrey because he he's really kind of revolutionary in a way. 
Let's take an EV report of what's going on. Uh, 32 science. We'll keep that data and we can board. And let's also take a mystery goo observation, I guess would be a good time. Mm, 40 science. We'll keep that data and we will be happy with it. And I think that's all the data we can take, but that looks like all we're going to have for this episode, guys. Next episode, we will land on Minmus, we will return from Minmus, and we may possibly check out more scientific stuff and, you know, just do that whole thing where we buy and expand. And maybe soon we will be getting into nuclear rocketry to head to Duna. Because nobody likes going to EVE because it's ridiculously hard to land on, but everybody loves going to Duna, mainly because it has Ike. Everyone loves Ike. Who doesn't love Ike? Or go to Jewel, but I really don't want to go to Jewel since it's really far away and has like 40 billion moons on it. But yes, that is all for this episode. If you liked this episode, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.